We start with a point. Hello, welcome back, friends. My name is Rob Bryanton, and this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Psychedelics in Space Time, and I'm going to start out with a couple of quotes from David J. Brown. Imagining the Tenth Dimension is one of the most brilliantly conceived and mind stretching books that I've ever encountered. And also, utterly charming, beautifully illustrated, and elegantly designed, O is for Omniverse is a book to be read aloud again and again. David J. Brown has been a good friend to this project, offering very kind words for both of my books, as we've just heard here. David is the author of seven mind expanding books about the evolution of consciousness, achieving optimal health, and the future, including four well-known volumes of interviews with leading edge thinkers, Mavericks of the Mind, Voices from the Edge, Conversations on the Edge of the Apocalypse, and Mavericks of Medicine. David holds a master's degree in psychobiology from New York University and writes regularly for publications all over the globe, including Scientific American. He's also one of the world's leading experts on psychedelics and has acted as editor for issues of the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies newsletter, the MAPS Bulletin. I'll provide you with a link here if you'd like to know more about that organization. With this project, we have to acknowledge how difficult it can be for our monkey brains to visualize extra dimensions. In Are Bees More Sixth Dimensional, we looked at the startling evidence that bees use sixth dimensional geometry to describe the location of food sources to each other through their complex dance patterns. How could a bee be able to think in six dimensions when even four can seem like a stretch for we human beings? For me, these discussions always come down to finding ways to picture what parts of our reality come from the extra dimensions which are at additional right angles to the four dimensions of space-time, which leads us to the title of this entry. I know I've said this before, but people come to these vlogs sometimes without having read or seen other parts of my body of work, so I want to be clear on this. I have no experience with psychedelics myself. And that leads me to the conclusion that people do not need to take psychedelics in order to visualize what lies beyond our reality. There are other paths to these insights. Nonetheless, I hear every day from people who have taken psychedelics of various kinds and tell me that my approach to describing how the dimensions are connected together makes a great deal of sense when applied to what they experienced, and in many cases has helped them to understand what they perceived. Which brings us to Terence McKenna. Terence, who died in April 2000, was a charismatic speaker, a philosopher, an author, and a strong advocate for psychedelics. With my project, I've spoken a number of times about Graham Hancock's amazing book, Supernatural, which makes the claims that there are multiple ways for human beings to achieve altered states which allow them to peer into these additional realms, and psychedelics offer one of those ways. I'm going to give you a link to a YouTube video here, in which you'll hear Terence McKenna voice a contrasting view. He says psychedelics are the only way for people to open their minds up to these possibilities. Now the movie we're talking about here is called Psychedelics in Religion, and I'd like to thank Joshua Holmes for showing me this video. I'd also like to thank Joshua for creating the painting we're seeing behind me here, which he tells me is his interpretation of a DMT vision. I also want to give you a link to a Terence McKenna article which proposes that as primitive human beings develop consciousness, those who narrowed their perceptions down from these extra realms to space-time only developed an evolutionary advantage. And uh, I'm going to quote just a little bit from that article right now. I think that, and it seems logically compelling to me, that consciousness as ordinarily experienced is a human ability shaped by evolutionary pressure. And since evolutionary threat and harm usually comes at us in three-dimensional space, this is where consciousness has been forced to concentrate and define itself. So what happens when you take a compound like psilocybin in silent darkness in a situation of no threat and low anxiety and low input from the exterior world is that this function, which is essentially in most situations a closed fist ready to strike out at something coming from nearby, unfolds into something much more beautiful, much more interesting, and much more true to itself. In other words, not defined by an exterior context or situation, but defined by its own mechanics. The question, I think, is this. Are the visions experienced by persons taking psychedelics simply tricks of temporarily altered brain chemistry, or are people actually catching glimpses of something real? 
And does that mean someone with the proper grounding in extra-dimensional geometries and cosmology might be able to find a way to incorporate those visions into their theories? It's a fascinating possibility to consider. Finally, I want to read you a quote here from Terence McKenna on David J. Brown. That our perfected selves whisper to us from the future is but one of David J. Brown's fertile insights. And that's from Terence McKenna, author of such books as Food of the Gods. Clearly, this is an idea which connects to my project as well, including one of my favorite blog entries from a few months back, Love and Gravity. We're going to continue exploring these fascinating patterns that are at right angles to our space-time next time with an entry called Bees and Tangential Thinking. Till then, enjoy the journey. <laughs>